Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician, and on this video we're going to look at exponential equations again, but this time we're going to look at a word problem that involves interest rates. So interest rates you're going to find with a lot of your banking institutions, and when you start to open up a savings account, or sometimes even a checking account, you're going to notice that those banks offer you interest rates as a way to gain some money. And for today's video, we're going to see how those interest rates can actually be translated with an exponential equation. Now remember, our exponential equations have a generic form, and that is y equals a times b to the x power. Remember that a represents our y-intercept, or our starting point. Sometimes we call that our zero term, or our initial value. And b represents our multiplier. And our multiplier is our rate of growth or our rate of change. It's the number that we're multiplying by as we move through our outputs. So I have a little suggestion here for a scenario, and it's gonna tell us exactly what we're interested in for this savings account. We see that we decide to open a savings account with $750 that offers a 7% interest rate compounded yearly. Now, I wanna draw your attention to this word down here that's called compounded yearly. What that is referring to is that is saying that every year is when you're gonna get your interest, the amount of money you're getting back into your savings account. That's gonna happen every year. That's what compounded yearly means. If that said compounded monthly, then that means every month you would be getting your interest into your account and gaining money every month. And if I had wrote compounded daily, then that means every day you would be getting some money in your bank account and you would need to go run to that bank and you would need to open up a checking or savings account as quickly as possible because no banks are gonna offer you uh, an interest rate that compounds daily. For our suggestion here, we're looking at a bank that compounds yearly. Now we wanna create an exponential equation that demonstrates what's happening in this problem. So again, the two big components that I want to figure out is what is our y-intercept or our starting value, and what is our multiplier or our rate of change. Now, when I'm working through this problem, there's always going to be one that's very easy to find, and it sometimes differs. Sometimes it's the multiplier that's easy to find. Sometimes it's the initial value. I think for this problem here, the initial value or the y-intercept is going to be the easiest one to find. We're opening up our checking account, I'm sorry, we're opening up our savings account with $750. That is what we are starting off with. That is our initial value or our initial, our initial term, $750. That's our y-intercept. That's our zero term. That's going to represent our A value in our exponential equation because that is the amount of money we are starting with and putting into our savings account. So we are halfway there. We know our A value. The last thing we have to determine now is our B term or our multiplier. And I want to draw your attention to the fact that you're going to be receiving a 7% interest rate. That means 7% of your money is going to be added to your account every single year. So let's think about it this way. Our interest rate means that we are adding 7% every year. But what are we adding that interest rate to? You see that I wrote plus 7%, but what, do I, what am I going to write here in the beginning? And this is sometimes where I get confused with some students, is that we kind of forget this step, and it's a very crucial step. We're taking 7% of our total money in our bank account. So the total money, in this case, the 750, that total percentage is representing 100% of my money. We're going to be adding 7% to 100% of my account. 7% of the 750. So I need to write out my multiplier this way, that I have 100% of my money, I'm adding 7% of it, 
So after that year, I will have 107% of my money in my bank account. That is a percentage. We wanna convert that to a decimal. Remember when we convert percentages to the decimal, we need to move the decimal point over two spots. So 107%, that is the same thing as 1.07. That right there, that is our multiplier. That is what we're gonna be using to solve this problem and to see how our money changes every year. So I'm gonna write that in as my B term and I'm gonna put that to the X power. Now we have a working equation here that'll help us identify how much money is in our bank account after a set amount of time, okay? Our initial value or our Y intercept is $750. Our multiplier is 1.07 because we have an interest rate of 7%. So now that we have this equation, we can find out how much money is gonna be in that bank account for any year that we want. For example, let's say that you keep this account open for about 10 years and you wanna figure out on the 10th year how much money you have in that account. So all we have to do is take that equation, y equals 750 times 1.07, and we need to change our x value to what, how many years have passed by. Remember, this is compounding yearly, so x represents years. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in here 10 for that x value. All I have to do now is enter this expression into a calculator, and I will find out how much money I have after 10 years. So I'm gonna open up our free Desmos online scientific calculator to help us with this. Remember, you can use this calculator on your iPhone, your Android phone, even on your computer or tablet. It's at desmos.com scientific. And we can now enter this expression and find out how much money we'll have after 10 years. So I'm gonna type in 750, parentheses, 1.07, that is my multiplier on this problem. I wanna use an exponent, and the exponent button here is this one, a to the b power. I put that in, I can type in 10, representing 10 years, and I see at a 7% interest rate, after 10 years, my $750 turns into $1,475.36. So let me go ahead and write that here. $1,475.36. Now I don't really have to write the numbers at the end because we're dealing with money here. So I really only need two numbers after that decimal spot. But that shows you after 10 years at a 7% interest rate, you've almost doubled your money. Very cool. But let's say you leave that money in for a long time and you actually forget about it. And maybe one day in the mail, you see that this bank sends you a letter and says, yo, it's been 40 years since you've opened this account. You forgot all about it. You need to come into the bank and you need to claim your money. And now you're sitting there wondering how much money is in that account after 40 years. Well, since we have this equation here, we can just use that equation, y equals $750, parentheses, 1.07. We'll change that x value to be a 40 because that is our input there. It used to be 10, now it's 40. And now we can see exactly how much money we'll have in that account after 40 years. So let's go ahead and see that. I'm gonna get my calculator out and let's determine this. $750 times our multiplier of 1.07 to the 40th power. And we see that at the 40th year, your tiny little initial investment of $750 has now grown to 11,000 $230. I would be super happy if I opened up an account, forgot about it for 40 years, went back there and saw 
that there was $11,230.84, okay? That's why we come up with these exponential equations because it allows us to determine at what year our savings account can be at. And it all just depends on your initial investment and your interest rate. Or in other words, your y-intercept and your multiplier. It's that math magician, and I'll see you on the next video.